okay, what's the difference between social media and digital marketing like SEO, email marketing, etc. Um, if we have time, we'll try to answer them. But in my slides today, I actually compared Instagram, Facebook, and Google. All right. So we'll look at demographics, characteristics, how Instagram works. I'll also explain a little bit about the Instagram algorithm, although it's always changing. So if you're like not using Instagram regularly, uh, you might not know and understand what the change is about. Okay, but I'll try to, my best to explain a basic algorithm that uh, is actually applied throughout all the social media platforms. Okay, and uh, I'll try to try. I think there should be fifteen minutes uh, for Q and A. Okay, so as we get started, right, the first thing I hope to explain is um, the evolution. Okay, evolution of um, communication. Okay, at any point of time, if you can't see my slides, just let me know, okay? So the evolution of communication, evolution of um, basically marketing communication, right? Last time, we only had phones and we only had our, our mails, right? Uh, so we can mail a uh, hard copy, we call it a, we call it a newsletter. Right. Um, nowadays, I think it's still around, but effectiveness, I'm not sure. I think I receive like lesser promotional flyers in my mailbox nowadays. It's like, I think it has dropped so much. Okay. So now we have like live chat functions. We have chat bots. We have social media. We have forums. We have webinars. We have, uh, we still have mail. I think a little bit. Um, if you still receive mails in your in your mailbox, let me know. I haven't been receiving them for a few months, actually. I, I now that we talk about it, I, I think I realize. Okay, we have smartphone social media marketing, we have uh, WhatsApp messaging, etc. So things have evolved over time. Okay, so the key is to understand how communication, how marketing comms have evolved. Okay, so uh the cost of advertising has also been brought down drastically with the evolution of communication tools, all right? Uh, just let me see, is there like a... Okay. So I hope everyone can see my slides, yeah? Um, okay, so basically... Um, The slides are not shared, but if you like to take some screenshots, uh, feel free to take a few screenshots, okay? So, um, now I'll explain to you this concept called the marketing evolution uh, with this example that Guy Kawasaki, one of my favorite uh, speakers, uh, he did this tech talk back in 2013. So he tried to explain uh, the evolution of industry 1.0 to 4.0. At that point of time, we were still not talking about 4.0, okay? so. Uh, at the point of time, he was just explaining what 3.0 is. So, um, the, how it works is like this. He used uh, ice makers, okay? Ice makers as an example. So, he said in, one, in the 1800s to early 1900s, there was something called the ice harvesters. So, what the ice harvesters do as a business, right, is that they actually go and harvest ice and then they sell the ice. So, it means that if your country has four seasons, uh, then they can only harvest ice during the winter or they have to head over to places where there's ice, okay? So that's uh, 1.0. 2.0 is where factories came about. So they figured out how to make ice um, mass in a mass format, okay? So they made it and then they sold it. So not limited by climate or season. That's uh, ice 2.0. So his version, right, of explaining what 2.0 is about. 3.0 is where everyone is equipped with a fridge at home. And that's when you can make your own ice. So this ice factory, to a certain extent, sales dropped, okay? And um, it's like our own personal PC. If you remember, someone actually last time when uh, computer first came about, I think in 1984, 1983, 1984, when uh, Windows, when Mac first came about, um, at that point of time, people predicted that no... It is impossible, okay? They said it's impossible for someone to own a desktop at home. Okay, that was what was being said. So similarly, at that point of time, people who had built an ice factory, they had a business about ice, uh, their, their business about ice factory, uh, they never thought that freezer would come about, okay? Now, the question is, what is 4.0? Okay, so what are your thoughts, right? Uh, a lot of my participants like to tell me, 
Um, I mean, you can drop it in the comments, in the chat, okay, so that we'll take a look at it before I let you know what my other participants um, tell me what they think about what 4.0 is, okay, but the, the lesson learned from this is that the people in the ICE 1.0 never made it to the 2.0. So basically when factories came about, they couldn't catch up and they basically had to close, uh, they, they had to go and do other types of businesses, okay? Sim similarly for 3.0, the businesses doing the fridge today never, um, were never from the ICE 2.0, all right? So 4.0, don't even need a personal PC, but ICE is, <laughs> no, basically it's an example that he gave in 2013, okay? So some participants tell me 4.0, maybe order ICE online, right? So things like that, but uh, that's for you to define. But really what I'm trying to explain to you is marketing has also evolved over time. So if we had, uh, done if we are still do, doing actually in fact if we are still doing um, mailers we are still doing um, phone calls uh, and not looking at what is new right now then um, it's really a big question for us to ask ourselves um, any one of you I think earlier for those who were early I actually asked uh, are you B2B or B2C okay B2B or B2C all right, so um, feel free to let me know your industry, all right? So basically, just understand that marketing has evolved, okay? So before we go to the next slide, right, I just want to ask you, okay, typically when we market, when we do something, for, uh, we have some goals, lah, okay? So what is your goal? I have put four uh, in this slide, okay? Brand awareness to help customers know you, like you, trust you, Okay, that's a bit of branding and brand positioning as well. Um, you want to generate leads. You want to uh, better support your customers when you do uh, marketing, right? You want to help them to know about your business, your products or services. Um, driving traffic to your website. So what is your goal? Um, type it into the chat. Type it in the chat. Let me know what are your goals when you want to market. It, it can be, you might say that uh, none of this four. So you can let me know what are your goals when marketing. These are good questions to ask. And towards the end of the presentation, I will ask you again and see whether that has changed. Okay. And see whether that has changed. All right. Drive sales. Yeah. So um, it's not here. Right. So you want sales dollars. All right. Cool. Revenue. Yep. Like sales. Customer engagement, great. So customer engagement, Josiah, interesting. Okay, generate leads, yep. All right, brand awareness, okay. So you just need to remember, okay. And in fact, throughout this whole webinar, it'll be good if you have some paper and pen. Just write down all the questions that I'm asking you, okay. And then towards the end, you can look at it again and see whether your answers are the same or just don't look at your answers and just look at the question again and just answer them again, all right. Be an influencer, okay. Yeah, so <clears throat> in some form, actually, that is a very good definition, okay? SJ, uh, being an influencer, is actually a very good um, uh, explanation because to be very honest, so we are approaching social media marketing, right? Like a, like a, like a direct sales call or like a, a mail, um, what you call it, a direct mailer in the inbox you know we just tell you what there is but actually that has honestly evolved okay so this webinar i really hope to explain what are the differences um, so that you can understand what's the difference so in a sense actually it's quite similar to what sj has mentioned which is um influencing our customers all right influencing our customers so that's what i think i would um actually agree uh, two, right? So, uh, influence, brand awareness, good, good. Okay, engagement. Okay, those who mention engagement, very interesting as well that you have mentioned engagement, yeah? Okay, so I'll just uh, go on. Okay, just remember your answers, write it down somewhere. I'll ask you again towards the end of the presentation, all right? So, um, many of you may, may be asking why Instagram, what are some reasons? So, I have five reasons for you, okay? Number one, customers are age 25 to 34. Why is this important? Why is understanding our customers' uh, age group or the platform 
um, the age group of the users on the platform. Why do you think this is important? This is actually the most important part. So a lot of people don't really know the demographics. They just see people doing Instagram and they want to do Instagram. Spenders, okay, very good point. Anahita, very good point. They are spenders, also known as they are spenders, also known as working adults. They have the ability to decide for themselves. They are decision makers. All right. So this is how we usually present our, okay, to our class. <laughs> decision makers. Okay, they can decide because they might be working adults. They might be working, right? We can say we can um we can debate and say that, oh, but you also work what part time job, but what we are saying is that they are decision makers, meaning that they can decide for themselves uh what they are going to choose, what they are going to do with their money and uh, ability to purchase. Okay, so target market interesting. Okay, so you have to know whether your who who your customers are. I always have um participants coming to the class and tell me that their customers are aged like 18 to 55. That's too large a uh, age group. And then your marketing message basically just get diluted. Okay. Number two, why Instagram? It's actually what we call branding and brand positioning. Okay. So that customers uh, will remember you and you can stay top of mind. Partly because uh, organic results is still quite high on Instagram. Or Facebook is actually quite low. It's about five to ten percent. If you get ten percent, you are actually on the higher end already. So um, Instagram, you can still get about twenty to thirty percent. Sometimes even better, like uh, almost a uh, hundred percent kind of uh, results. Okay, seventy to hundred percent. So if you consistently do well, actually you will keep getting the same uh, very good results on Instagram. Okay, point number three: Why Instagram targeted advertising? So um, that's one of the reasons that is different from uh, Google. Google, you advertise based on people's search intent. So if I'm searching for Instagram marketing course, then you are actually bidding for that keyword Instagram or you're bidding for the keyword Instagram marketing course. So you are, you are advertising based on intent. For social media like Instagram or Facebook, in today's context, we're talking about Instagram, it's targeted advertising based on location, demographics, and their interests, okay? You can also target some of their behaviors. Behaviors can be something like if they are a Facebook admin, uh, administrator, most likely they are a social media marketer or I can assume that they are a business owner, correct? So um, these are some of the targeted advertising, meaning that they don't have the intent, but you can plant the intent in them. All right, so that's targeted advertising for you. Uh, number four, okay, you can actually... Uh, build up your user-generated content on Instagram. So what it means is user-generated means that you can encourage your followers, your customers to create content for you, okay? And last but not least, okay, there's something called uh, retargeting, all right? If you have heard of retargeting before, there's something called retargeting on uh, Instagram, okay? So this five, uh, retargeting, basically, you need a bit of uh, advertising budget. Lah. A lot of people, actually, they don't qualify for retargeting because uh, they don't have an audience that is not insufficient audience for Facebook to create a retargeting uh, or a lookalike audience, okay? So, these are basically using uh, the Instagram system to kind of like generate those audiences, lah. okay? So, uh, let me go to the next slide. Okay, so let me run through with you a bit of the demographics here on Instagram. Okay, this is from Napoleon Cat. If you like to check out their website, but I've taken a screenshot here. Okay, um, this is the latest one that I can get, March 2020. So you can see here, 25 to 34 is the biggest. Uh, if you add both female and male together, it's about 39, 40, 40, 40.3%. Okay, 40.3%. So, um, the second biggest age group is actually from 18 to 44 because their age groups are uh, quite similar but leaning more towards 18 to 24. Okay, so, um, but of course, eventually this age group, as years go by, it will actually uh, be older. Okay, so just remember that part. Okay, now, Instagram versus Facebook, I mentioned a little bit later, uh, earlier. Okay, so Google is by intent, but the cost is um, per click. The Depending on your industry, for our industry, it's quite expensive. Um, 
if like the most expensive I think right now is like digital marketing. So digital marketing workshop, digital marketing course, uh, C O U R S E, right? A course will actually be the most expensive keyword right now. Um, uh, across the all the different social media, like compared to Instagram marketing course or Facebook marketing course, SEO marketing course, SEO is also quite expensive, uh, Okay. Whereas for Facebook and Instagram, right? Um, typically per click, you right now you can still get about um seventy cents to a dollar, a dollar fifty cents, which sometimes you can get it on Google as well. Uh, but it must be a search intent. So if there's no intent to search for it, you there's no way for you to advertise. So that's why social media marketing is so appealing to business owners. If you even if you don't have an intent, I can plant that intent and that thought in you in you. Okay, and Instagram has um re relatively higher reach, so that's one of the uh things to understand. And there's something called hashtags, so you are actually discoverable through hashtags. So sometimes our feed, right? We get say for example, one hundred and fifty reach from our existing followers, but we actually get an additional one hundred and fifty reach from just hashtags. So from just using hashtags, we get double the organic reach. So that's how much you can still get. On Instagram okay now next let's look at a bit of characteristics there are many things but I will just uh, share the basics okay um, some characteristics of uh, Instagram tech savvy how many of you uh, agree that before you decide on something okay uh, you will do your due diligence in comparing so for example how many of you have um, signed up for a paid course before Meaning that you pay or you use like uh, your, your, your company sponsor you, right? So basically, it's not a free webinar like today, okay? You, uh, because it's paid, right? You would actually compare a uh, few types of few uh, training providers before you decide. How many of you will do that? How many of you will do that and how many of you will not do that? So let's do a comparison. How many of you will do that? You will search. Okay, good. Joanna will do that. Okay, but if you don't do that, just let me know. I just like to compare. Okay, you will search. No, okay, City will not search. So basically, you just pay for it. Okay, interesting. All right, all right. Okay, I think most of you said, I think I only see one no. Anybody else that's a no? Let's see how is that ratio here. Okay, so basically, I think we can confidently say out of 79 people, okay, uh, but some of you, only some of you responded. Um, I think I only see one no so far, okay. So tech savvy, we can agree, yeah, these are uh, people who are using Instagram. Even if they're not using Instagram, actually most people will do this, uh, but the users on Instagram are even more tech savvy, okay. Social media savvy. All right. Uh, so meaning that what they will do is they will not only rely on one social media platform. They will check whether you have other social media platforms and whether you have reviews. Okay. How many of you, it matters to you that a brand, a company, not only has a, what we call a Facebook page, business page. You are you you will check and see whether they have a Instagram or. YouTube or what they post on LinkedIn. How many of you will do that? Let me just... Uh, how many of you will do that? You will? Okay. Oh, City, you will? Okay. So... Uh, yeah, we'll do that. No, Tracy will not. Okay, Susan will not. Okay, so I see more no's for this. Okay. Okay, but... Okay, no, we'll not do that. Okay, but... A lot of our... Okay, Sarah will do it. Okay, interesting. Okay, so we have a bit more balance, almost like a, I think I see more no's. Okay, I see more no's, but I do see quite a bit of yeses as well. So the key to understand is that right now, a lot of, a lot of um, this age group of people, right, if you like to call them millennials, um, but, but what happened is uh, they... they Facebook business page is not enough for them. And most of the time, they actually want to see whether the business has an Instagram profile or not. Or what is this uh, company, this brand, this influencer, if you like it, uh, is posting on Instagram. Okay, so that's um, number two. Point number three is social credibility. 
meaning we, we will not only look at their social media profiles, we'll see whether there's any reviews, okay? So um, basically like Facebook reviews or Google reviews, right, or testimonials. I'm sorry, just let me mute somebody, uh, there's a mic going. Okay, so the last, last point is, um, this is a stat released by Facebook. Um, 80% of Instagram users follow a brand. So why is it important that brands are on Instagram? It's because um, we do follow brands on Instagram. All right. So we do follow brands on Instagram and uh, you will want to be, you will want to be a brand that people follow. All right. So to put it that way, you will want to be a brand that people follow. Okay. So, that being said, let's go to the next uh, slide. Okay, so how Instagram marketing works. So I'll explain to you how Instagram marketing works. All right, number one, <clears throat> hashtags, okay? So maximum of 30 hashtags uh, rec uh, are allowed, but how many will you use? Actually, my recommendation to all my participants is at least 10, at least minimally 10. Um, usually, I will use about 20. Uh, so to give more discoverability, as you grow bigger, you don't need to rely on hashtag that much because you have more following and so long as your initial audiences actually engage with your posts, then your posts will reach more people. Okay, so as you grow bigger, you will, you will, lose, use, you will use lesser hashtags. Um, I wouldn't recommend you to use 30, reason because it looks a bit spammy and also, um, if other people actually uh, do a hashtag on your comments, right, then uh, it's considered as too many hashtags. And if you want to actually promote your, that, that particular Instagram post, they actually don't allow you to do it, okay? So hashtags, um, we even call it a hashtag strategy. So a bit of research is required and a bit of strategy is required. You need to group them up to different size hashtags and you need to mix them up. So five small, five or 10 medium hashtags maybe one large hashtag. I don't really think that large hashtag works for smaller accounts. Okay, so um, that's just a note for some of you. Okay, but for those of you who have really big accounts, like more than 10, 50K followers, actually you don't really, um, you don't really need to use the small hashtags, right? What does small, big, medium hashtag mean? Okay. Now what time is it? 75. I will just do a very quick uh, switch screen, okay, just to explain this. Um, so I still have quite a bit of slides to cover. Okay, let me just switch up. How many more slides do I have? Okay, I still have quite a bit of slides, okay, but... Okay, say for example, you go to Instagram, right? Okay. What you can do is, uh, say for example, if I'm talking about uh, Instagram marketing, so I'll just search like, in, I'll put a hashtag in front, Instagram marketing, okay. So Instagram marketing has 825,762, 825,000 now, okay. And this is what we call considered big hashtags, okay. So some people say that in millions, then it's big lah. But I'll just tell you very honestly, if you use this hashtag, what happened is that, within seconds, okay? Okay, la, maybe within a minute or five minutes, you go and look for your post, right? You wouldn't be able to see, you wouldn't be able to find your post, okay? So what we call small hashtags are those that are like, these are considered small, okay? Hundreds are small, up to like 2,000, 5,000 is still considered small, okay? 10,000 also considered small. I think most people consider medium, like 100K onwards. Personally, my favorite is to use hashtags between the uh, hashtag size of like 5,000 to 50,000. I try not to use too big a hashtag because to be very honest, your post is not discoverable. Okay, so I hope to explain to, I think there were three questions by Kara, Susan, and Joanna. So hopefully um, you understand what hashtag means. So you would, I think, I think what you need to do is to do a bit of research. All right, and you, besides just researching like that, uh, you, must, you must click through, okay? You must click through and look at what they are posting in the hashtag. Uh, you, there are some hashtags that looks very nice, right? But actually, you might not want to use it for your brand. Um, they might not have content that you want to be related to. 
Okay, so do a bit of that research. And also, if let's say it's not related, say for example, uh, I like this hashtag called Instagram marketing tips, but my post is not even about Instagram marketing tips. Okay, uh, eventually you will be penalized for using irrelevant hashtags. All right, so only use relevant hashtags. Okay, so um, all right, it's also a communication tool. Okay, to build relationship with your customer. So for those of you who mentioned customer engagement, Instagram is a tool for communication, but a lot of brands don't use it to communicate. They just use it to tell customers uh, what promotions, what products they have, what services they have. They don't use it to try and listen and ask for comments or ask their customers what do they think. Um, you will have to define what, a communi what communication is to you and your business. And when you do that, you have better clarity, okay? You have better clarity. Um, so how Instagram marketing works is your initial engagements is very important. Okay, so say for example, you post something and like, let's say you have uh, 500 followers. Instagram shows it to the first uh, 10%. So 10% of uh, your following will be 50 people. And out of all these 50 people, nobody uh, clicked through to your profile, nobody saved, nobody commented, nobody liked, um, then we call that zero initial engagements. So you will see that all your posts will be stuck at 50 uh, organic reach, okay? So that's how uh, Instagram is. Instagram is about your initial group of engagement. So if your initial 50 engage very well, they will push it up to the next 50 and so on and so forth, or even the next 100. Actually, a lot of social media works this way, not only Instagram. All right, uh, last point, okay, is the more you educate or entertain your followers, the more uh, you can attract them to you. So you can define this as well, what your customers are looking for, but the question to really ask yourself is how can you attract uh, followers? Okay, so look at the brands that you follow on your own Instagram account. For those of you who have Instagram accounts, uh, do you follow brands and what, makes you follow a brand maybe you can just quickly share with me what makes you want to follow a brand anyone nice photos okay what industry is it travel food okay the contents right so what kind of contents are you all looking for what kind of nice photos updates of promotions okay Anybody else? Food industry, videos on cooking, okay? So, very interesting because you didn't say food industry uh, promotions of food. I mean, maybe you would like that as well. Good reviews, okay? What else? Let's say, let's think of, um, let's think of food since some, uh, Y actually mentioned uh, food industry. Let's think of food. What will make you follow uh, F&B? Relatable content, yeah. So that's very true. So what kind of content is relatable, right? So think of those things, okay? What would help your customers want to follow you, okay? Food delivery and hype, mm -hmm. okay? So the question is, if let's say it's something that you like and you want, uh, you want uh, what we call, um, you want to attract people who are like-minded. So. If you do what you like, you will attract people who have similar preference to you, okay? So, of course, if you want to attract a different group, then you might have to pivot your content, lah, okay? So, a bit of the algorithm, this is just the basics. There are many hundreds and thousands of things that they, they take into consideration. But uh, this is basically when you post, okay, let me just exit the full screen so I can have my mouse, all right? So, when you post, the most extreme case is it doesn't do well and delete your post, but it first shows your 10% of your audience if they like and comment. Uh, if they don't like and comment, basically they reduce, maybe they put it out to another 10 people kind of thing, like 1%, 2%, and then um, it stops there, and your account will not get the exposure, so you don't grow. But if they do engage, comment, send, save, so note that I didn't say like, Okay, because like is actually the not a very what we call a uh, engage, a very valuable engagement. Because like is very easy, just double tap. 
So if they drop you a comment or they send it to someone or they save it, right? That is more valuable, an algorithm trigger, okay? And that's when Instagram shows it to more users. They don't engage, then it stops that like you don't grow, right? Then if they continue to engage, then they put you on something called the explore page. And that's where you get um, very high organic reach, okay? So that's how basically we can grow on Instagram. So by understanding how the algorithm works will help you to understand um, also what you need to do, uh, which is to pay attention to what people are looking for on social media. Okay, what people are looking for on social media. Now, okay, I think uh, I'll just go on. Okay, uh, later I'll ask you what's your takeaway. All right, so I have a few case study here I decided to put because I, uh, I'll, let you, I'll, I'll let you guys choose, okay? Uh, so we'll explore what is good about each platform. Okay, the reason why I put Circles of Life and then I put M1, Singta and Starhub below is because Circles of Life is the new, one of the newest players, right? We also have TPG. Uh, I mean, we can take a look at TPG if you want, but I, I think Circles of Life does their post very well. Personally, I feel that they entertain me quite a bit. Okay, so um, basically, I would, I would actually, um, I would actually prefer uh, to follow Circles of Life if given a choice. I would prefer to follow Circles of Life compared to uh, M One, Singtel, Starhub. But I'll let you guys choose. Base, uh, we'll use them as case study, and I'll give you some takeaway points on. Um, each industry. So I've chosen two FMB. One is a telco, and the other are two government agencies. Anyone from government agencies before I, before I uh, say too many things. Anyone from government agencies attending this webinar? Anybody? Usually, government agencies join our uh, Aventis courses. Actually, Skills Future and Circles of Life. We probably can only pick one. Because I still have a few more slides, but later if we have more time, we can come back. Okay, skills future, CPF. Two votes for skills future. Two votes for circles. Two votes for three votes for CPF. Three votes for okay, just one more vote. We'll decide between CPF and skills future. Circles, CPF. Okay, great, CPF. Actually, CPF has the nicest uh, Instagram feed. It's actually one of my favorites. I actually follow them. Okay, so let me just switch up my screen. And I can tell you that when I first used CPF as a case study, they only had 7,000 followers. Look at their followers now, 19,000. Okay, so CPF, I want to ask you, who do you think their audiences are? Who do you think CPF audiences are? You can type it in the chat. Singaporeans, yeah, but just be more descriptive. Who working adults? Okay, give me an age group. If I will tell you like a five to ten year age gap, can you give me an age group? 30s, 30 to 40, 35, 18 to 25, Joanna. Okay, 18 to 25. Okay, working adults, maybe older, nearing retirement. Okay, so that's a very good question. Huh? Basically, CPS message is to plan for your retirement, okay? To plan for your retirement, okay? For those who say 30 to 60, too big an age group. If you think about it, if you want to plan for retirement, you must plan early, okay? So if their age group audience are 50 to 60, okay, uh, don't hold it against me, but it's too late. It's too late to tell them to plan for their retirement. What they're trying to do here is to educate the young people why retirement is important, um, how to better think of uh, their money, lah, okay? So I'm going to show you uh, their post, okay? Don't you think it looks very nice? Out of all the government agencies, I think CPF's feed is the nicest, nicest, okay? Um, first March 2017 was the change, okay? Uh, I think in my other presentations, I do have them. So you can look at, you can look at all their, this thing, right? All their posts, okay, and most of the time, right, they actually um, give you like tips on uh, savings. There was one period of time, if you remember, in two thousand and sixteen, the Grab was giving a lot of seventeen. Grab was giving a lot of vouchers uh, away to to encourage people to use, right? 
So what happened was um, CPF actually had this post to say like, although I'm always looking for coupons to use, um, but actually taking public transport saves me more money. Okay. So basically they communicate in a very engaging way. Yeah, of course, they hire a uh, agency, uh, probably not a very cheap project, uh, doing a very good job, actually. And you can see how they actually um, do, like, fun facts, okay? They will tell people about their uh, talks, okay? This was 2019. Okay, puzzles, um, what is OA, SA, and MA, right? So very interesting and they always play with puns okay that's why i i enjoy you can see i'm following them okay so you can ask yourself so when they actually was on instagram initially when they started right uh their content was not geared towards uh the younger crowd which is those who have just started coming out to work okay but eventually they figured it out probably i don't know whether internally they figured it out or that maybe the agency um, told, told them that basically this is, you know, so sometimes agencies with a bit of um, uh, strategy, they can guide you, lah, okay? They can give you very uh, clarity. Yeah, so they post quite often. They post quite often. Like I mentioned to you, their, their following, right, is, is, is actually like doubled ever since I first followed them in 2018. I first found out their page in 2018, okay? So basically, um, they do it very well. So they are actually a good case study, lah, okay? So they not only pay attention to the visuals, okay? They also ask questions, they quiz people. You can go through this thing, what we call a highlight, okay? You can go through the highlights, very interesting. They will ask you questions, yes or no. They will quiz you, they will poll you. So if you see their poll, uh, if you see their post, every two to three days, right? Aside that, they are also doing stories. So they will ask you like other questions, real or not. So you can click and take a look at it. And then after, I think, after you take a vote, the results will be shown to you. Okay? So these are all their different stories. So you can take a look at them. All right? So this is a, actually a good case study. Last CPF is actually a good case study. Okay? But well, that being said, I hope that you take away some things. Just ask yourself, who is CPF audience? Um, for, for those of you who said um, people who just came out to work, you are correct, okay? So if you take a look at their Facebook, etc., they don't post the same things. Um, and what they're trying to educate is a younger crowd and they're trying to, uh, I would say, influence them, okay? For those of you who say influencing. So they're trying to influence them to um, save for their retirement early, um, give them some nuggets every single time. Um, there's an opportunity to uh, on uh, why they should save or why they should consider uh, different things, okay? All right, anyways, you can take a look at Circles of Life, also very interesting. Uh, later, if we have time, I'll just run through Circles of Life. They had one post recently I thought it was so funny, okay? So let's move on. Uh, this is what we call uh, 21st century marketing, okay? There's this thing called the inbound and outbound. So inbound works something like this. Inbound is how you can attract them, you can convert them, you can close them, and they can delight. Delight meaning that they are still your follower and they enjoy your content. And they can also become your brand ambassadors, all right? Outbound is basically in the early 2000s ah, and before, in the 1980s, 18, 1980s to 1990s. Okay, we are doing a lot of this cold call, interactive ad, actually, Five years ago, there was still a lot of interactive ads, right? But today, how many of us watch TV? Okay, I actually don't really watch TV anymore. Um, I watch more YouTube, more Netflix. And uh, the only time I watch TV is when I'm having lunch or dinner, okay? And my parents is watching and I just watch. <laughs> so, two years to gain 12K followers, da 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 Yeah, actually you'll be surprised for a lot of brands actually within uh, two years, they are able to grow so long as they uh, consistently invest in uh, good content, creative content, um, visually appealing content. Okay, so think about this inbound versus outbound marketing, all right? So social media is about inbound marketing, how you can attract people so that they are 
they like you and they want to know more. Okay. I always uh, give three points. How can people get to know you, like you, and trust you? These are three things that's very important that social media can help. Okay. Uh, it's like cats. All right. Cats, when you chase them, they just run away. So the key thing is to ask yourself, what can you do to attract them? Okay. So the question is, what can you do on Instagram to attract customers to you? Okay, this is what I call pillar of content. Okay, pillar of content. Okay, so think about it. I, I just have a very small suggestion here. Uh, a pillar of content that I usually, even for education industries, uh, we have clients in the indus uh, education industry, study abroad education actually. And what we recommend to them is uh, to think about how they can attract potential students on Instagram. So recently in one of our strategy calls, um, we said we want to motivate them. So what can we do to motivate them, right? So you have to ask yourself all these questions. If it is a, a weekly quote, a personal story of a student who studied overseas, um, graduated, found a job, right? Things like that, opportunities, right? How can you inspire them? So maybe once a week, every Monday, you can do an uh, inspirational post or motivational post. Okay, Tuesday, you can share about your knowledge. You can share certain tips uh, of studying better. That's how you attract students, right? If you don't share tips on studying pro better productivity or even things that students are interested in, how are you going to attract them? You wouldn't be able to use relevant hashtags to attract them as well. Okay, and so on and so forth. All right. Do you have any recommendations for SME without government budget? Ha. Huh. Okay, I will try to answer that later, okay? So keep your questions coming. Okay, those of you who have questions, you can start submitting them now. We'll try to take or we'll try to answer most questions, all right? Now, there's a lot of things going on on the internet, okay? This was uh, as of 15 July 2019 last year, huh? almost one year already. We are in June 2020 now. So at that point of time, this step, released by Brandwatch says that every single minute, there's 347,000 people scrolling through Instagram. Okay, If you don't have a very visually appealing and um, um, eye-capturing or visual attract, um, what do you call it, uh, cap yeah, captivating content, people will just scroll past. They will not stop at your content. So ask yourself, how can you uh, do that? Okay, So what contributes to success? What contributes to success in our life? Okay. Uh, these are some things that I listed out. Hard work, perseverance, occasional late nights, discipline, good habits, courage, rejections, risk, passion, dedication. When we posted this on Instagram, one of our followers um, said something. Uh, I think it was uh, passion was his point. So we included it. Uh, okay. But the idea of sharing this is to tell you that similarly in life, there's so many things we need in place to have success in life. It's the same thing for social media. It's the same thing for Instagram, okay? So besides just the followers that you see, okay, the verification that influencers get, there is actually a strategy, a to-do list to get there, a content strategy to get there, okay? A time commitment to show up consistently. Of course, a lot of uh, influencers might at, at one point already start hiring graphic designers or photographers maybe to take their photos, right? And a, a lot of things need to be in place. You have to be very clear on your goals, okay? So this is basically what it requires for Instagram, all right? So let's go on to the next slide. Okay, so remember I asked you what your marketing goal is, okay? So ask yourself what your marketing goal is on Instagram. I've explained a few things and I think I do agree with uh, some of you who mentioned influence. It's really, social media is actually really about influencing your customers, um, influencing potential customers and existing customers uh, in a positive way, in a positive way, okay? So, uh, if you're, eventually you will, be, you will be able to generate leads, eventually. But if that is your initial goal, it's going to be very confusing for people and you are not going to be able to attract as many people as you hope that you can attract. So, that is um, what social media marketing is about, especially Instagram, especially Instagram. Okay, so branding, I think uh, being on Instagram is really about branding, brand positioning. I think the easiest way I can explain this is with this post. It's actually a new post that we just created. I added it in my slides for the session today. Um, it's um, 
asking yourself, what is your unique selling point? Uh, how are you going to differentiate yourself? The easiest way to understand is about coffee. Why are you not willing to pay more for a coffee shop coffee? Why are you willing to pay $7 for a coffee bean coffee or Starbucks coffee, right? So what is it? Is it about the experience? Is it about how you feel? Um, ask yourself why sometimes we are willing to pay. Not every time, right? Some people, maybe some of you, you can afford it and you go for coffee bean or Starbucks coffee every single day. Okay, for me, I don't. Uh, but I enjoy coffees from cafes. I don't mind paying $5 of Six dollars sometimes, right? Nowadays, the price is like getting up uh, more and more expensive. So, what is it that we are paying for? Is it the experience? Uh, some some of my friends like to say it's the aroma of the beans. Okay, so really you have to ask yourself what and why are you willing to pay more? Okay, for certain things, same same things, but why is it more expensive? Six seven times more. All right. So uh, before we end, I just have a few more slides for you. Okay. Um, nowadays, a lot of people always tell me, wow, Instagram takes so much time. But right now, we actually save a lot of time. I think majority of us, we are still working from home. I'm still working from home. I save about at least one and a half hours, okay? Uh, traveling to work, uh, sometimes two hours, all right? So these are time saved and you can start learning a new skill or you can start paying attention to Instagram for your business, especially if your customers are within the age group of 25 to 34, okay? So, a lot of time, if you just spend two hours a day, okay? Take the time that you use to travel uh, for work, commute to work, to and from work, to start on Instagram, okay? So, the question to me, right? What are some recommendations for SME without a government budget, okay? Use that two hours that you're commuting to and from work. Now, you don't need to commute. I think most of us, we don't need to commute. So, use that time to um, do Instagram marketing. Okay, to ask yourself, um, what can you do, all right? Ching, this is a great time to start on Instagram. Um, so many of us, if you haven't heard, heard already, are spending so much time on social media due to COVID-19. Um, uh, I tell you, when COVID-19 first started, right, wow, we were enjoying so much reach on Instagram. Okay, now they have updated their algorithm. So our reach went back to before COVID-19. Okay, so they did an update. So, but we were enjoying so much reach on Instagram during when COVID-19, when the lockdown first started. Okay, because so many people are on Instagram, on social media right now. Okay, so... Some view COVID-19 as a disruption while others view it as opportunity, all right? Okay, if you know Chinese word, okay, Wei Ji means that there's an opportunity even in a crisis, okay? All right, it's like a game of chess. The more you practice, the better you get, all right? So I highly encourage you to start uh, with Instagram, but start with a strategy, start with a plan. Uh, I made some suggestions earlier. Ask yourself what, how can people get to know you, like you, and trust you? Uh, like our educational clients, okay? Um, every time I will always ask them, how can you appeal to students? And the only way is to help them, to help them with their studies, to help them with certain uh, things in life about education or choices, career choices, right? For our clients, actually, they actually give uh, what we call um, free consultation, education consultants, career consultation. So, you want to put it out. You don't want it to be... Now, we can't do it face-to-face. -face. So, a lot of our clients are struggling because they are not comfortable uh, with video, with live contents like um, webinars or... Actually, they do webinars, but they are not comfortable to like get in front of the video and just uh, start speaking and sharing, okay? Okay, um, before I end, okay, I'll just tell you a story about this tiger, okay, just for everyone to understand, okay? Two friends went hiking in the jungle and a tiger appeared, okay? So the lesson, I mean, uh, and what happened was when they saw a tiger, one of the friends immediately quickly uh, just turned to the friend and asked, like, should we run for it? And then the friend immediately um, stood down and tied his shoelace. And his friend was like, are you crazy? The tiger will just eat you. So guess what was the friend's reply? Okay, the friend's reply is that 
I don't have to run faster than a tiger, I just have to run faster than you. Okay, so similarly, social media, digital marketing, you don't have to be the fastest out there. You just have to run faster than your competitors, run faster than other people. So that's the story, not to say that you should let the tiger eat your friend up, but uh, the idea behind it is that you don't have to be the fastest out there, you just need to get started. Okay, everyone just need to get started. For us, we were also late to the game. We only started our profile creation in 2017. And I think we only started to be really like a proper strategy in 2018. Okay, so, um, all right. So, Q&A time. So, some of you had questions. Nope, I do not know which agency managed CPF's uh, uh, pro profile. Okay, but it's definitely one of the bigger agencies out there. Usually the agencies is just rotated around. Yeah. Okay, any questions? Someone asked, do you have any recommendations for SME without a government budget? Actually, if you think about it, right, um, even designing, there are many free tools uh, available. You just need to sharpen your skills. Uh, okay, look at like good designs and um, Ask yourself, how can you make it better? So that's one way to improve, okay? I always, always tell my participants to do this. Uh, that's, some people, not comfortable, but that's really the way to learn. Uh, you look at good designs, you try to create it. Then somehow your, your mind, your hands, just learn how to design better. You're just so good at alignments, you just get better. So even for Canva and PowerPoint, okay, actually majority of our posts, uh, on our own social media feed is designed in PowerPoint and Canva. Very rarely, sometimes we use Illustrator, sometimes we use Photoshop, but very rarely, like I think out of 10 posts, maybe only a few, like two, three. Okay, PowerPoint and Canva, Canva, C-A-N-V-A. Okay, the only thing I don't like about Canva is um, Right now, okay, it's a free it's a free software, but right now I think they have a limit on uh file sizes that you upload because we have been using Canva for a long time since two thousand seventeen, maybe sixteen or seventeen. So what happened is um by now we are at like eighty eighty seven percent of our storage on Canva. So to me it's like okay, initially there wasn't any limitations, uh, so I'm not sure what's the limitations, but we are trying to delete stuff right now just to have some space. But there are just certain things that we create in Canva, but not many. We use more PowerPoint. Okay, any questions about Instagram? Nobody has any questions about Instagram? Okay, if you have questions, just type in the chat. I'll try to answer them. We have five more minutes, actually. Uh, today is good time. Okay, if you're interested to learn more, um, Aventus actually has a... Continue your questions. If you have any, just put it in the chat. I'll answer them. Okay, and it, uh, Aventus has this uh, upcoming course. I'm the trainer. Okay, on 18 June. Today is 10. Today is 10 June in eight more days. So uh, on Thursday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. conducted over Zoom. Okay, so uh, if you're interested, there's a 20% discount right now. The code is LIVE20. LIVE20. Does it matter that we follow more people? Actually, okay. Actually, if you think about it, right? Okay, I won't answer it, but I will ask you to think about it. Let's say you only have 100 followers and you follow like 500 people. People come to your account and take a look. What is your first perception of that? What is your first perception of that? Anyone can answer it. You can answer it as well. What is your perception of that? A lot of people teach that as a strategy, but I don't think it's wise to do that. Partly because... Um, the reason why we follow other people is so that we can be updated of their content, we can engage with it. If you follow so many, there's only this amount of content that Instagram can put out to you. So you will not see um, the people who you want to engage most with uh, and you will not be able to engage with their content. So that's why we don't recommend you to do that. Okay, and also um, it doesn't look good. Like, op optics wise, okay, my friends love to use this. Uh, uh, definition optics wise doesn't look very good okay so i wouldn't recommend you to do that um if you're going to ask me a good ratio i will say uh if you really need to follow this pe those people just go ahead and follow but i'm just telling you that 
the more people you follow, uh, it's impossible for them to appear on your feed. Okay. In fact, uh, there are some accounts, right? We only follow like, I don't know, 70, 70 over accounts. Some accounts that we really like their content, right? We are not seeing their feed, their contents on our feed. In fact, I think Instagram's algorithm suggests based on your engagements with contents and hashtags also. So we also follow hashtags. Yeah. Okay, next question by CT. Any feature of showing which part of day shows number of visitors coming in. Yes, there is something called insights, but you need 100 followers. If you don't have 100 followers, the insights is not available to you. Uh, once you have 100 followers, they tell you what time people are online, but it's a three hour block. So they will tell you like 9 a.m. to 12 midnight, 6 p.m. to 8.59 p.m., right? So they'll tell you by blocks, uh, it's not by one hour blocks. Do you think do you think Instagram will be overtaken by another social media platform in the future? <laughs> uh, definitely. I think uh, like, the, like the guy Kawasaki slide I, I shared with you earlier. Okay. Um, uh, where is it? The guy Kawasaki slide. Okay. A lot, of, a lot of social media platforms are unable to innovate. But I'll tell you that Instagram is paying a lot of attention. Like when Snapchat had the story function, they immediately put it in. When another platform had a uh, live, live, oh no, live all along, they had it, but uh, they had it on Facebook all along. Lah. Um, what was the other feature that Instagram took from another platform? I can't remember, but stories was one of them, the 15 seconds one, and then uh, it would disappear within 24 hours. That was actually, um, so, but the problem is, this is not innovating. This is just uh, reacting. So once a business uh, is not innovating, not thinking about breaking the, uh, breaking the business norms, that's when new things will come up. Okay. But to be very honest, it's not like very soon. I think, but if you look at Facebook, right? Because the organic reach is so low, I think a lot of businesses almost giving up on Facebook already. <laughs> okay, so it's not going to be so soon, but yet I don't think, I, I think if Instagram doesn't innovate and doesn't empower businesses, doesn't empower creators, then very soon, lah, very soon. Okay, so that's why they're paying so much attention to videos. They're trying to compete with YouTube. Okay. Uh, if you don't already know, Facebook and Instagram is competing with YouTube for video time. Okay, for our time. Actually, all the social media platforms are competing for our time. All right. Okay, next question. Earlier, you said if you wanted to see any other regarding why we use Instagram, is there a takeaway from that? Oh, yes, yes, yes. So basically, what's your takeaway from this uh, um, session? Whether or not um, whether or not your answers have changed. So for those of you who have, uh, where's that slide? Okay. For those of you who have um, answered earlier, based on the explanations that I've given so far, has your answer changed? Has your answer changed? Um, most people, by the end of the webinar, they will understand that um, actually it's really, we cannot look at Instagram as like our cold calling, we just pulled out our promotions. Those brands who are still doing just promotions only, I think eventually they will not be able to survive with just promotions. Imagine every time giving a discount. It's so difficult on a business. Okay, so hopefully your answers have changed, but most people, every time when we first start the class, uh, people will always tell me they want sales, they want revenue, they want to generate leads, but actually social media marketing is uh, not so much about lead generation at the start. But once you influence people, um, you attract them, eventually that will come. Okay, but that, if that's your initial goal, it's going to be very difficult. It's going to be very difficult. Okay, so I ask yourself whether or not, um, where's that slide? Yeah, ask yourself what is your takeaway and whether that has changed, whether your marketing goal has changed. Earlier you said you wanted, oh yeah, that's the same question. Will you, what will be covered in a one day course? All right, um, a lot of things, but mainly is to work on your content strategy. Okay, um, uh, there'll be something called a buyer's journey on the internet that we walk through with you. There's also time to do a consultation with me and I'll walk through with you uh, some, of the, some of the things that you should pay attention to 
uh, especially on Instagram, especially if we talk about um, attracting and uh, attracting your uh, what you call followers, okay? But I will drop the link, the course detail. Let me just copy it. Okay, let me just send it to everyone. Okay, here's the link to uh, Aventis' uh, uh, course detail page. Uh, the outlines are all there. There's a lot of things that we cover uh, in a one-day workshop, uh, but mainly it's also to help you understand how you differentiate yourself. Advertising, we talk about it as well during the one day. We talk about stories, we talk about hashtag strategy, we talk about research. And uh, I'll give you feedback as well. I think most participants benefit from that, which is the feedback that I give based on the contents that they're thinking of creating, that they've brainstormed, their bias journey, their hashtag research, and their strategy moving forward. What's their focus for the next um, one to three months? Okay. Snapchat. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? If no other questions, um, that's all from me. All right. Um, if you have any questions, you can stay back. Um, like I mentioned to you, uh, Aventis is giving a 20% discount right now. The class is on 18th of June, just eight days from now. I hope to see you there. All right. Thank you so much for joining us, actually. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Joanna. Yep. Thanks so much. Okay. If you like, just email Roshini. Uh, uh, her email is here. Okay. Thank you for joining us, actually. Thank you. Okay. So have a good, if you haven't had your dinner, have a good dinner. <laughs> and um, I look forward to uh, seeing you guys on 18 June. All right. 18 of June. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Abigail. I'm done.